Okay, so this will be our second program with VBA. Now you'll notice that I'm on the Developer tab. If you don't have the Developer tab available, you need to watch the first video and configure Excel to have that Developer tab because uh, that's a nice easy way to get into the Visual Basic environment. You'll notice there is a keyboard keystroke for the Visual Basic environment. You can hold down the Alt key and hit F11, but I'm just going to click the button. Now I'm picking up where I left off. If uh, you do not have the modules here, in fact, maybe I'll just go ahead and delete this so that we can start that over again. Again, again we need to create a code module so we can actually type some code. So let me go ahead and uh, and I'll just remove this. It says, do you want to export it? No, I don't want to export it. So I just removed it, and so here I am, like I'm starting from scratch and. To put a module in, again, you right-click down here in this white area just below uh, the, the workbook object that you see there. So I'll right-click and say Insert, and we're going to insert a model, module. And there it is. And uh, again, it doesn't have any name, so maybe I'll just go ahead and rename that. Uh, just You just make sure that's the selected object. And then down here in your Properties, you uh, highlight the name module there and uh, I'll just type code and uh, there we go now I've just renamed it to code now uh, um, this window is not full screen I, I suggest that normally you zoom that up full screen now let's take one quick look at those options again just to make sure we got those set right so we go to tools options and we make sure we have all the little checkbox checked here and I'm going to go to the editor, editor format and I think I'll bump that up to 14 point font just to make that a little bigger for you so here we're going to go ahead and just type in another little short program so all of our visual basic programs are going to be broken up into little code groups and uh, there are two ways to group your code primarily in visual basic and one of them is a sub that's a shortcut for subroutine. So if I just type sub, and then I type in the name of my subroutine, and your names really generally should start with a letter. So I'm going to kind of type sub1. And then I'm going to hit enter, and uh, Visual Basic will add the rest for me. So I just hit enter, and notice the parentheses are inserted for me, and the end sub is inserted. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, just put in a lot of blank space here just to make it a little easier to read. So I'm going to put a couple of returns in and now I'm gonna tab over and I'm gonna type a comment so a comment starts with an apostrophe apostrophe is uh, is the unshifted quote key there next to your enter key and um, we're just gonna go ahead and put a little simple comment in here so we'll just call this a simple program and a comment is something that is added to a program simply to help the person reading your program understand what it is you're trying to do with your program. Again, one of the key ideas when we're programming is, is that we're writing a program that other people are going to read and they need to be able to understand it. You might come back and read this program six months from now, let's say, and you want to understand what the program is doing. So we just put a little simple comment in there just for fun. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a memory location inside the computer that I can store a value into. Essentially what we're doing when we're programming is we're manipulating the computer's memory. In other words, we have a lot of stuff that we can store in the computer's memory and then we're going to want to maybe change some of that and store new things into the computer's memory and then we maybe display that with the use to the user or save it back out to our hard drive. So the way we declare a, a memory location, you can think of this as sort of like a little scratch pad where we can store something. So we do that in Visual Basic by using the dim keyword. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, maybe put in another little comment here. So I'm going to say declare a storage location. In memory, let's say memory. Now when I say memory, I'm talking about the computer's RAM memory, the memory that is lost when you turn the computer off. This is generally known as the working memory inside of a computer. The hard drive is your long-term memory, and that's sort of like your, your long-term storage to save things when your computer gets turned off. So let's declare a memory location. So I'll go ahead and say dim, and we'll just call this total. 
And when we declare a memory location, we've, we, we give it a name. As you see here, I've given that a name. But I also need to tell it what kind of stuff I'm going to store into that memory location. So the kind of stuff I want to store into this memory location is going to be a long. A long is a whole number. It's a, it's a big whole number. It can go up to approximately 2 billion, plus or minus. But it's a whole number. It has no decimal part. So let's just go ahead and, and declare that memory location. And now we want to store something into that memory location. So I'm going to store a number. And we'll go ahead and do that. So the way you store a value into a memory location is first you give the name of the memory location. In this case, the name of the memory location is total. And then we want to store a value into it. So we say total is set equal to. And, that, and notice how I said is set equal to. That's the assignment operation that you see there. The, equals uh, is the assignment operation. And let's store a 100 into that memory location. So I store 100 into that memory location. So that's, that's a pretty easy idea. What if we wanted to add something to that memory location? So let's say, you know, add um, 10 to our memory location. Well, the way we would add 10 to that is, well, again, we want to store the value once we get done with the addition. We couldn't just say total plus 10, because then where would we put that? We always have to store everything if we want to get back to it later. So what we really want to do is we want to do another storage. So we're going to say total is set equal to. And then we want to take what's currently in total. And of course, if you stop and think for a minute, you'll notice that 100 is the current value that's in total. So we'll take our total, which is currently 100, and we'll add 10 to that. So you'll notice on the right-hand side it says total plus 10. Well, total is 100. You can see up above it's 100. This is just sort of like substitution in, in math. You know, you substitute values in for your variables. Well, in this particular case, the value of total is 100. We then add 10 to it. And then we store it with that assignment operation back into total. So once we're finished with that, what should be the value that's stored in total? Well, the value that's stored in total ought to be 110, of course. Now, we can always use a message box, MSG, B-O-X, to display a value in the computer's memory anytime we want to. So if I just say message box, MSG, B-O-X, and then type a space, and then type in total, then what that'll do, of course, is that will display that memory location. So maybe we ought to put a little comment in there that says that. So let's just say display the memory location total. So our message box statement should do that. And if everything works the way we expect, we ought to see the value 110 on the screen. Now, again, how do we run a program? Well, if you'll notice again, up at the top, you have the little little arrow there that says run that particular program. Now you'll notice that my cursor is still inside this subroutine. So if your cursor is actually inside the subroutine, when you press the run button, it will run the current subroutine your cursor is within. So that you won't have to actually pick the name from a list. So it's a little easier if you leave your cursor inside the subroutine. So let me go ahead and hit that run button. And indeed, it displayed 110, and we're feeling pretty good about that. Click OK, and you're back in your Visual Basic, back in your program. Again, we've done a number of things here that are important. One is we declared a storage location in the computer's memory. And we had to do two things. We had to declare the name of that memory location so we could refer to it. And we had to declare the type. The next thing we learned was how to do an assignment, how to store a value into a memory location. So this is the assignment operation right here. The value on the right is stored into the memory location, the named location on the left. And here we just did a simple addition. And finally, we printed it out on the screen with the message box to see indeed if it did what we expected. Now you should definitely type in this program and get it running.